what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be giving you my infantry commander guide for rise of kingdoms for free to play players now this this has been by far the most requested video in my comment section and in my live streams people are asking me how do you build an effective infantry army as a free to play player right and it's no mystery why this is such a big question because most of the effective infantry armies that you see out in the open field include richard the first and charles martel um the reason for this is because they're both very very good commanders they're both infantry based and they're also some of the oldest commanders in the game right they've been around since season zero basically since the launch of the game and so players have had time to build up their sculptures and pump universals into them and really get them to a higher level um, and then once you start to get into season two and season three you see a lot of the pay to win uh, players are using somebody like um, Alexander the Great or maybe they're using uh, Guan Yu with Leonidas in uh, season three and so all of these commanders are super powerful um, but they're really not that accessible to free to play players right especially the season two and season three commanders um, because they haven't been out as long people haven't had as much time to invest in them because you know legendary commanders sculptures are hard to come by especially as a free-to-play player and so it kind of leaves people thinking okay well how do i build an effective infantry army then um if i don't have access to the best commanders in the game so i sat down and i i have a list here and i i really thought out you know how would i personally build an effective infantry army if i were to start the game as a free-to-play player today with the knowledge that i have being 50 million power and i came up with a couple of things um and so if you're familiar with rise of kingdoms most free-to-play players are um kind of limited to the epic tier there are you know you you do have some uh, ability to earn legendary commanders it's just not that um it's not that often that you'll have really powerful legendaries as a free-to-play player um so with that being said if we're looking at the epic tier we only have two commanders that have the infantry um talent tree right we have sun tzu which i've talked a ton about in my previous videos and we also have ulji mundak now if you remember from my previous videos you you probably remember me saying that sun tzu is one of if not the best epic commander in the game and so you know you may be thinking well there's your answer right there's your answer that's your infantry commander and the problem with that is that sun tzu is so powerful because of his skill damage aoe right he does a ton of damage in a fan-shaped area um and you really want to you, you really want to focus on that right when you're building sun tzu you want to focus on that skill damage because he's so good at that he's so good at aoe and so most players actually build him um with the full skill tree and then put the leftover points in infantry and you know that's it's it's one way you you could do it um but i don't really think that that is a great option right i think sun tzu if you're gonna use him uh you want to use him with another commander that's also super focused on skill damage or aoe um and and that's how you're gonna get the most use out of sun tzu and again most players know this right most players are familiar with how to use sun tzu um but that doesn't answer the question of well how do you have a good a good infantry army then um if you don't if you're not going to use him right all you have left is ulji mundak um and for me ulji mundak is a little bit underwhelming right he's a little underwhelming um I, I think it's because this first skill is very unique it has probably the lowest damage factor out of any epic commander um if i'm recalling correctly um it's a single target damage factor for 750 other epic commanders who have lower damage factor usually have an aoe at least um and so you have that but you also have this unique debuff on that single target by 30 percent for two seconds so that's pretty substantial right a 30 percent decrease in defense is significant for sure um and then the rest of his skills are just pretty standard right they're pretty standard 15 percent buff to attack and defense for infantry super useful for an infantry march um but still standard for the epic tier right nothing incredible there it's not over the top it's just it just falls very average in the in the in the tier ranking right and then you have the fourth skill which is a 10 percent chance to double damage on the next turn right increase your damage by 100 percent for one turn 
and you know i think that's a little bit underwhelming right I, there's only a 10 percent chance of it happening and it's only for a single turn that you double the damage and you know his active skill doesn't even do that much damage in the first place so really you know it again he's a little bit underwhelming for me right um but he does have the infantry tree and if we're gonna be building a infantry army we need the infantry tree right because that's how you're gonna get the most buffs for your infantry uh, units and we already talked about you know sun tzu while he's great it's not really a good idea to build him full infantry because he's so good at skill damage right so if we build sun tzu skill damage we still need a full infantry talent tree and yulji is the really the only other option right and so if we accept that if we accept okay our full infantry army is going to be led by Ulji Mundak, right? Because we're, we're really limited with what we can do. Um, this is what I would do, right? And mine's only level 50, um, but this is how I would build him. I would build him full infantry tree. Um, you definitely want to make sure to get effortless because this is really going to increase the damage that you're dealing with Ulji Mundak. Um, so you definitely want to go over here. You definitely want to max out this top final talent in the talent tree. And then at that point, um, you've got some flexibility, right? I still have uh, 10 talent points that I can put into him. And so if I were to do that, I would probably put uh, two of them here to increase March speed because infantry are pretty slow as it is. I would like them to be as fast as they can be. Um, this isn't a huge buff to an already slow unit, but it is what it is. Um, and then we can get 1% extra health. We can get 1% extra defense. Um, so that would be using force. We'd have six left. Um, and at that point we could do, um, I would probably put three here and then you could put uh, three in either unyielding for damage or three into armored joint uh, to reduce damage taken. That is up to you, um, but this will give you also a little bit of a defense buff as well. So that's what I would do if you guys want to take a screenshot of this and then take note of what else I recommended. Um, that is how I would build a free to play full infantry army um, for Rise of Kingdoms. Again max out this infantry tree literally everything put every point that you can in this infantry tree including these top two corners including the march speed including the strong uh strong of body and then the rest of your um talents should go certainly over to effortless this is actually probably the first thing i would get if i were building ilji i would get this first um, because you're also getting lord of war which is super good this is really going to increase your attack um and you're also going to get a little bit of a rage engine from burning blood it's not that much but you do get a little bit more over here from undying fury so that is um pretty useful right and then from there once you get the full infantry tree and you get effortless then i would come over here and grab either unyielding or armored joints you could mix the uh, mix them up if you wanted to um but yeah that's what i would recommend um for a talent build for a full infantry army as free to play so now that we've got that out of the way, right, we've established we're going to be using Ulji for a majority of what we have here. I do have other recommendations, though, so we're going to be talking more about that. Um, we're going to be using Ulji. We're going to max out that infantry tree. So how do we use Ulji Mundok effectively to lead all infantry units, right? So what I tried to do was play to his strengths, okay? So what I thought was he's going to be debuffing their defense right so what you actually want if he's primary and the way that this works is this when yulji's um active skill pops off the next turn is when the defense of the enemy will be decreased by 30 percent and the next turn is also when your secondary commander's active skill is going to go off so what's really interesting is you can actually with Ulji primary, you can lower their defense. And then if your secondary commander has a powerful single target skill damage, it's actually going to do even more damage because they're debuffed on that turn. So that's really interesting, right? That's super interesting to think about. So one thing that we can do is we could just do the obvious thing, right? We could pair Ulji Mundak primary and we could have Sun Tzu as secondary. And the reason that this doesn't mess up how else we would use Sun Tzu is because secondary commander's talents don't matter right they don't matter so you could still build sun tzu as a full skill damage aoe machine and if you use him secondary with ulji mundak that's okay because you're getting all of your talents from ulji which are going to be 
full infantry talents right and so by having sun tzu secondary you get a couple of things one you do get access to his really great aoe um, you won't be taking full advantage of it because again there's really not that much of a of a rage engine with ulji and he doesn't have the skill tree to buff that damage but it is still there right it is still there you do still get that fan shaped area that's nice it does generate a little bit of rage that is also nice and then also it reduces the damage that your infantry are taking and they're already going to be pretty tanky because of the infantry talent tree that Ulji has maxed um and you also would get a little bit more um infantry health right you'll get 10 percent more infantry health just by bringing sun tzu along for the ride really cool finally you increase active skill damage by 20 percent that will apply to Ulji mundok's primary skill so that's interesting right you're going to be buffing that um that essentially that's a that's a weakness of Ulji mundak is that low skill damage on his primary skill this will buff that a little bit right so sun tzu is not a bad option right because again he does get an extra 10 percent infantry health um and you can still build him full skill damage to use him in a different way in a different scenario right so that's something that you could totally do let's say that you're using Sun Tzu for something else. He's out on the field doing AOE damage, what he does best, right? What do you fill in that second slot in the event that you that you need a full infantry army and Sun Tzu's not available? Like, right? Like what, what would you do then? Well, I think another great option to pair with Ulji would actually be Boudica, right? She actually has some really interesting synergy with Ulji Mundok. Her first skill when it's expertise has a damage factor of 1000. So remember what I said before, once Ulji Mundok's active skill goes off, the next turn is both when they get the defense debuff and when Boudicca's skill will go off. So they'll have a lower defense when Boudicca's skill damage hits, which is going to make it even more effective, right? And it's already a thousand, which is pretty good for an epic commander, right? So she has that big skill damage, which is really cool. And it will be timed perfectly with Ulji's debuff, right? And so I'm really loving that. I'm really loving that. She also debuffs that army by a hundred rage and decreases their attack by 25% for the next two seconds, right? So now we're debuffing their rage generation. We're debuffing their defense with Ulji. We're debuffing their attack with Boudicca. We're really building a debuffing army with this pair, which is super cool. We also have the Celtic Blood passive skill, which adds some rage regeneration for Ulji Mundak, which is really nice. And it also heals Ulji's um, army, which is great because again, infantry is pretty tanky, right? Infantry units can take damage when they're backed by a full infantry talent tree. And Boudicca adds to that sustainability by being able to heal some of those wounded units. So that's really cool adds more synergy. And finally, Boudicca's fourth skill has a small percent chance to deal a lot of damage to the enemy. And so if this times up perfectly, with Ulji Mundok's similar skill, as well as the defense debuff from Ulji, you could have some really spiky, really high damage factor for one or two turns. Um, because this, you know, the chance is low, but um, it can still happen. So I think there's some really great synergy with Boudicca. Um, if your Sun Tzu is busy right now, again, Boudicca doesn't offer any sort of infantry specific buffs. But I do think that her skills um, complement Ulji and what he's doing pretty effectively as a secondary commander. Now, another secondary commander that you could consider would actually be Scipio. And again, Scipio has no infantry specific skills or anything like that. Um, but he is generally one of the most tanky units in the game in terms of the epic commanders, right? And I talked about this in my video about Scipio, um, but generally his skills are just very tanky right he reduces damage taken he has counter attack damage bonus he also has a chance to heal himself he also has a chance to increase damage and he brings 10 percent more units to the battlefield so that's 10 percent more infantry units that will be buffed by ulji's uh infantry talent tree which is pretty good the downside is that scipio doesn't really have any other synergy with Ulji other than just being generally tanky and bringing more units to the field. So he doesn't really take advantage of Ulji Mundok's um, debuffing. Um, he doesn't have any skill damage, right? Scipio has no skill damage. So he is um, an effective secondary that you could use if what you're doing is building the most tanky infantry unit that you can while also focusing specifically on infantry buffs with Ulji Mundok's talent tree. Um, that's something that you could do, right? 
now let's say you're not going to use Ulji Mundok as your primary right let's take a look at some other options besides Ulji Mundok um one thing that you could do right and this is a little bit outside the box you could do an Osman the first primary right and what I would do in that instance is actually build him full skill tree minus the naked rage so no naked rage um full skill tree and then make your way to fresh recruits and then build your way up the left side of this um of this leadership tree right and let's talk a little bit about what does osman bring to the table um that you know makes him a reasonable pick for a full infantry army right his first skill when expertise is to my knowledge the strongest single target damage factor uh, in the epic tier, right? He deals 1100 damage to a single target um, when he is expertise. His second skills for attacking cities, we're going to ignore that because you're not going to be attacking cities with a full infantry army of this caliber. His third skill is interesting, and this is where he kind of has a little bit of syn synergy with Ulji Mundok, and that is after an active skill is used, deals an additional damage factor of 400 to the target on the next turn, right? so how does this work well his first skill goes off he deals 1100 damage the next turn is going to deal an additional 400 as well as the 750 damage factor from ulji mundok ulji mundok's active skill is going to trigger osman's third skill again so on the following turn it's going to deal an additional 400 damage factor a second time except they're gonna have 30 percent lower defense from ulji mundok's primary skill being activated the the turn prior to that right so it goes osman primary skill second turn osman's third skill plus ulji's primary skill which will then trigger osman's third skill on the next turn again with the defense debuff hopefully you guys can follow how that how that actually plays out on the battlefield right and so what's interesting is that this is a very small damage factor don't get me wrong but it will be a little bit more enhanced by the fact that ulji will have that um the defense lowered by 30 percent, right so that's a little bit of synergy there right that's kind of cool how you get a big damage with with osman and it's enhanced by his skill and then you get a, uh, some smaller skill damage which is still enhanced by the skill tree from osman from ulji right his skill even though it's only 750 damage factor it's still going to benefit from the skill talent tree and then you get a little bit of synergy again with the defense debuff going in conjunction with the sort of osman third skill what else does osman bring to the table well he brings 10 percent more infantry army right he has a 10 percent um increased troop capacity you fill him with as many infantry as you can right this is a really experimental build um and it's definitely not the one that i would recommend the most in this video but you could do that right you could do a full infantry army full skill tree on osman and try to have some synergy with the defense debuff from ulji as a secondary now you could do um you could do ulji primary right you could do an ulji primary with an osman secondary that way his big damage factor lines up with the defense debuff from ulji mundok the only problem is that um when you do that you actually lose the skill tree right and so someone i haven't done the testing but you'd have to see what's actually better is it better to have a ulji primary full infantry talent tree with osman secondary um and, and taking advantage of that defense debuff with this first skill of osman or is it better to do like i recommended which is osman primary full skill tree and then yulji as the secondary to sort of take advantage of that skill tree as well plus the defense debuff for this third skill again this is a more of an experimental build um if you guys want then go ahead and try this out it's something that you could do if you don't want um if you're maybe if your osman is a very high level and you're you haven't invested that much in ulji's levels right maybe he's only level 30 or 40 um and you, you already have an osman that's level 55 60 then this might be a better option for you right now let's talk a little bit about some options that are less free to play but are certainly possible right these options are going to be more for players who are late game free to play meaning you've been playing the game for a while and you have had the chance to earn a lot of different um 
universal legendary commander sculptures and you've been spending them effectively on infantry commanders one thing that you could do and i actually think this is one of the best recommendations in the video if you can accomplish this is ulji mundok primary right the same build we talked about full infantry and the one of the sides of the attack tree this all the way up to effortless same build that we've showed so far in the video with a charles martel secondary who is five five one one that would be a really effective free to play infantry build right because not only do you get everything that ulji mundok brings to the table with the infantry tree and the effortless talent in the attack tree you also get a really powerful um damage absorbing shield from charles martel for four seconds and during the duration of that uh, shield it increases your troops damage by 30 percent right so you can imagine um ulji mundok skill goes off lowers their defense by 30 percent the following turn you actually get a 30 percent damage bonus from charles martel which really lines up perfectly with that debuff from ulji i really like this i really like this pairing here the second skill and the reason you want this to five as well is because you straight up get 15 percent infantry defense and 15 percent infantry health and that goes in conjunction with Ulji Mundok's 15 percent infantry attack and 15 percent infantry defense right so that's a re that's really great synergy and it's only five five one one right um this you wouldn't really use in the open fields but this one this fourth skill you would get an extra 10 percent counter attack damage which is nice right that's that's not something that you can ignore it's it's pretty good um and then moving forward as you build your charles martel um hopefully the remainder of the skill upgrades go into this fourth skill but i think that's a really solid rec solid recommendation having ulji primary charles martel secondary as a five five one one that's one of the best recommendations that i've um that i have in this video right if that's something that you have access to that's a really great option um again it's less free to play because we are talking about charles martel who is a legendary commander um but it wouldn't be that difficult to get him to five five one one if that's something that you're really focusing on another thing that you could do um is if you've been focusing all game on putting your universal legendaries into richard the first right and again this is not as free to play friendly as my previous suggestions right but it's not unreasonable to assume that you as a free to play player would be investing all of your legendaries into richard right because there's two legendary commanders that i think are the most powerful for early game uh and throughout even throughout late game um but are just some of the most universally um well known to be most useful right and that is uh richard the first and isong right those are the two uh legendary commanders that pretty much everybody recommends to max out if you can because they're just so versatile they're just so good right on the open field um isong has tons of uses as well um so it's entirely possible that as a free-to-play player you may have already been investing in richard a lot right every time you get a universal legendary sculpture you've put it in richard if that's the case what you could do is actually have a richard primary and what i would recommend is having him five 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 one right and i know that's a lot of that's a lot of skill uh that's a lot of sculptures right it's a lot of sculptures so that's what i'm saying this is less free to play than the previous recommendations but um there are definitely free to play players who could pull this off right um what i would recommend is max this first skill to five then bring them to two stars max this skill to five then bring them to three stars max this skill to five and then bring them all the way that's what i would recommend right and the reason that this is so good with a yulji mundok secondary or or if you have it a 5511 martel right if you have it um this would be a great pairing you could do richard the first primary um and the way that i have him built looks like this i went all the way to the end of the defense tree um and then i went up here and i picked up the hold the line with four points i also picked up strong of body for three points um and then i put my last point in fleet of foot to get a little bit of march speed just because i wanted to but you could definitely put it either in undying fury or you could just grab another point another percentage point of infantry defense that's up to you what you want to use that last point on um, but this is what i would recommend um building your richard as right and again richard primary 
Secondary would be Ulji Mundak, or um, if you have a 5511 Martel, you could do that as well. 5511. Um, and that would be another really great option if, like I said, you're late game free to play and you already have a ton of sculptures in Richard. Um, hopefully, they've been in the first three. Um, that's something that you could do as well and that would be a very powerful uh infantry army out on the battlefields right and again the reason is because richard is just so universally good he's got huge healing factor right damage reduction he also has more uh damage reduction on top of that with his second skill and he also increases infantry attack and defense by 15 percent if this third skill is is at five right um so super good super good there's a reason why a lot of players are using richard if you can get him as free to play um to five 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 one um he would be your best option right in 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 this video um the second best option would be like i said having ulji primary with a charles martel secondary that is five five one one my third recommendation would probably be ulji primary with Boudica secondary right because you can take advantage of that big damage factor um my next recommendation after that would be Ulji Primary Sun Tzu Secondary for obvious reasons. Um, and those two maybe are tied, right? Ulji Primary, Boudicca Secondary, and Ulji Primary Sun Tzu Secondary. Those are probably tied. Um, it depends on really who you're fighting. And then finally, if you really don't have that many other options, you could do Ulji Primary Scipio Secondary or Osman Primary Ulji Secondary. Those are just my thoughts on building a free to play infantry army that is as effective as I could get it. Um, again, I tried to include a little bit of everything from completely free to play to, you know, some options near the end there did require some legendary commanders, um, nothing maxed out. So totally obtainable. Uh, it just may take a little bit of time to do that. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a thumbs up on it, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. So that way, you know, the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms video, uh, a ton of you guys, 90 plus percent of you are not subscribed to the channel. So definitely do that. If you're interested in future content for rise of kingdoms, um, comment down below what you want to see next, because this video was recommended to me from you guys. So I really do take your, um, your suggestions, uh, seriously. So comment down below telling me what you want to see from me. What do you guys need help with? Um, my Twitch is in the description below as well. If you guys want to comment, if you see me live, ask me questions about rise of kingdoms, even if I'm playing something else, if I'm playing call of duty or Fortnite or animal cross anything, right? If I'm playing something else, you can still ask me questions about rise of kingdoms. I will be more than happy um, to answer your questions for you. Uh, and that's just a, a good way to catch me in the moment. You know, if I'm live, I can answer you in real time and you get, um, answers immediately instead of waiting for me to respond to comments with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace